In today's video, we shall talk about more applications of Newton's second law in the form of problems. In particular, we shall look at elevator problem, an inclined plane problem, and problems with masses on pulleys. Let's start with the elevator problem. A man whose weight is 650 newtons is standing still on a balance in an elevator. Now what is the reading on the balance, that is the man's apparent weight, not the real weight, the apparent weight, when the elevator is accelerating upward at a rate of 3 meter per second squared, or, or when the acceleration is downward at the same rate of 3 meter per second squared, and when the elevator is moving with a constant speed of 8 meter per second. So let's first sketch the situation here. So this is the elevator and this is the balance and the man is standing on the balance. So let's do part A. Now let's do the free body diagram. The free body diagram is of the man. Now the weight of the man is 650 newtons so that is the weight 650 newtons. Now since the man is standing on the balance there will be a reaction force from the balance pressing on the man's feet. So that's gonna go like that. So let's call this reaction force R. Whatever the value of R is, is the value that the balance will show. So R is the balance reading. So, a sort of a reaction force or some kind of a normal force from the action of the man's feet pressing against the balance. Now, note that although I'm using the term reaction, it need not be the same as the weight because, as you will see, there is an acceleration involved and at a rate of 3 meter per second squared. So to find the reaction, which is the man's apparent weight, let's apply the Newton's second law to this system. Now the net force is in the upward direction because the acceleration is upward, so that means the normal force of the reaction force minus the weight should be the net force. So R minus 650 is the net force. Now what is the mass of the person? The mass is the weight of the person, 650 newtons divided by gravity, which is 9.81, multiplied with the acceleration, which is 3. So the man's apparent weight R is 650 plus 650 over G, which is 9.81 times 3, and that will be 849 Newtons. So this is the man's apparent weight when he is in the elevator that is accelerating upward. His apparent weight is actually greater than his true weight, which is 650 Newtons. Now let's do part B. In part B, the acceleration is downward, which means the elevator is accelerating downward with the rate of 3 meter per second squared. So first, we have to figure out the net force. Now the net force now will be the weight minus the reaction force, because weight obviously must be greater than R due to the fact that the acceleration is now downward. So the net force is 650 minus the reaction or the normal force from the balance. The mass is again 650 over gravity and the acceleration is 3. So now we can solve for the reaction force and that's going to be 650 minus 650 over gravity times 3 which will be 400 and 51 newtons. So this is the apparent weight of the person in an elevator that is moving down with an acceleration of 3 meter per second squared. So the weight seems to be less than his true weight. 
Finally, part C. It moves upward with a constant speed with 8. Now, constant speed of 8 meter per second in an upward direction means the acceleration is 0. So there is no acceleration. That means the net force, according to Newton's second law, is 0. So what does that mean? That means the reaction force must be the same as the weight, the real weight. So immediately we can write that the reaction force or the normal force from the balance pressing against the person's feet is indeed 650 newtons. So that is the weight that the balance will show when the elevator moves up with a constant speed of 8 meter per second or any constant speed for that matter. It is indeed the true weight of the person. Let's do this inclined plane problem. So you have a block with a mass of 8 kg tied to a vertical wall. So this is the vertical wall. The plane is frictionless and the angle theta is 28 degrees. Calculate the tension in this string and also the normal force on the mass from the inclined plane. So let's start by sketching the free body diagram for this mass. So the first one is the weight. So what is the weight? Weight is 8 times gravity. G is 9.81. And then there is this tension, T, in the string that connects the mass to the wall. And you have this normal force, 90 degrees to the surface of the plane. Let's call it N. Now let's mark with red the components of this weight, both parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. So remember from our previous video, we have shown that this component of weight of this 8 kg uh, mass, the weight of which is 8 times 9.81, has a value of that 8 g times sine of that inclination angle, 28 degrees. So that is the expression for this component of 8 g newton weight along the plane. Now what about the component of that weight perpendicular to the plane? And that's going to be 8 g cosine 28. Now in case if you're wondering how I managed to get this and that, please go back and refer to the older video where I actually explained using trigonometry how to arrive at these equations. And now we'll be able to calculate the tension and the normal force. Now note the acceleration is zero because the mass is tied to the wall, it's not moving anywhere. So that means the net force along the plane and perpendicular to the plane must be zero. So let's calculate the tension. Since there is no acceleration that way, this tension must be the same as the component of weight parallel to the plane. So that means tension equals component of weight parallel to the plane, which is 8 times gravity. Gravity is 9.81. When I say gravity, I refer to gravitational acceleration times sine 28 degrees and that's going to be 36.8 newtons. So that is the value of the tension. So that explains part A. Now part B. To determine the normal force, namely this, we should look in the direction perpendicular to the plane and there is no acceleration that way as well. So the acceleration is zero perpendicular to the plane. So that means this normal force must be the same or balanced by the component of weight perpendicular to the plane. So immediately we can write normal force is component of weight perpendicular to the plane, which is 8 times gravity cosine 28. And when you calculate that, so let me remind you, gravity is 9.81 meter per second squared. It's acceleration due to gravity. It's going to give you 69.8 three newtons for the normal force uh, on the mass from the inclined plane. And that solves this problem. Problem three, pulley problem. So you have three balls, one, two, and three, suspended by a string like that. The top string loops over a frictionless pulley that pulls with a force of 100 newtons on the wall to which it is attached. 
So the tensions of the shorter strings T1 and T2 are given. We'll calculate the masses of ball 1, 2, and 3. So let's do ball 1 first. Free body diagram for ball 1. Okay. So what are the forces acting directly on ball 1? Well, there is this 100 Newton force, this force right here that is transmitted through this string, but it would act upward on mass 1, so let's label that. And then, of course, there is this tension, T1, that's pulling mass 1 downward. And let's not forget the mass of this ball 1, the mass of which is what we want to find times gravity. Now, of course, the acceleration is zero. The system stayed put. So by balancing the force, the net force is zero. So 100 must be the same as 55 plus M1G. So upward force is the same as the downward force, M1 times G plus 55. Now we know what G is. G is 9.81. And now we can solve for the mass M1 as 100 minus 55 divide by gravity which will be 4.59 kilograms so that is the mass for the first ball now let's do ball number two that is this ball right here so what are the forces that's acting directly on this ball two the tension upward which is 55 newtons and then the tension downward, which is pulling it down, T2, 45 newtons. And, of course, it has its own weight, which we don't know yet because we don't know its mass. Let's do, let's assume it's M2. And again, balancing the force because the acceleration is 0, 55. The upward force equals downward force, 45 plus M2G. And you can solve the M2 as 55 minus 45 over G, which is about 1.02 kg. So M2 is 1.02 kg. Now finally, mass of all number three. So the forces acting on it is its own weight. Let's call it M3G. And then the tension to above it, that's pulling it upward, which is 45 newtons. So since it's not moving, that force on it is zero. So M3G, its so weight must be balanced by that 45 newtons. So that means M3 is 45 over gravity. And that's going to be 4.59 kilograms. So here are all the masses that we have computed, and that solves the problem. Let's do the Atwood machine problem. We want to determine the acceleration of the system and also tension in the strain. Of course, 4 kg is heavier, so it's going to move down with an acceleration A, and 2 kg is going to move up with the same acceleration. So let's sketch the free body diagram for these two masses. The free body diagram for the 4 kg mass, the forces are its own weight, let's call it 4 g, and then of course there is a tension T on top, and since the acceleration is downward, the acceleration is that way. Now for the other mass, the 2 kg mass, the lighter one, so you have a 2 kg, the tension is of course upward, T, and it's being pulled by its own weight, 2 times gravity, and the acceleration is upward like that. So that means the net force on a 4 kg object is tension, uh, 4 times gravity minus tension, and that is ma, which is 4 times a. So there you go, equation 1. The net force on 2 kg object will be tension minus 2 times gravity, and that is 2 times a. So this is f equals to ma, or the second equation for the system. So two unknowns and two equations. You can solve it simultaneously. So you can add the two equations, so 4g plus minus 2g, that is 2g, minus t plus t, that is 0, 6a plus 2a is, uh, 4a plus 2a is 6a, so that means your a is one-third times gravity, which is 3.27 meter per second squared. Substituting the value of a inside this equation will enable you to solve for the tension 
as 26.2 newtons.